And I'll now look to Paul Hayes to continue the case for the opposition. Mr President. <laughs> Good evening. I'm going to try and ramp down some of the rhetoric and the emotion. Uh, and I want to talk a bit about, about facts. But mostly I want to talk about people. We've heard a lot about drugs. And the assumption has been that, that, you, that there's the drug, there's the person, and there's the impact. It's not like that. It's not like that at all. So about three million people in this country will use an illegal drug this year. Most of them will come to no harm. Most of them who are not unlike you, not quite as clever as most of you, but they're not unlike you, they will slot their drug use into the rest of their life, like society has for generations with alcohol use. You, they will overwhelmingly use cannabis intermittently for a relatively short period of their life, and they will emerge from that short period with no impact on them. There's three million of them. A tiny proportion of those people will experience problems. Some of them will experience significant mental health problems. They will tend to be people who struggled with life in any event and whose mental health problems tended to precede their cannabis use. Their cannabis use will exacerbate their mental health problems, exacerbate it very significantly, and there will be some, but only a minority, where you can demonstrate that it's causal. So three million users, not a lot of harm. 300,000 addicts. Now, in the opening speech, the assumption was, implicit even if not explicit, that the 300,000 addicts are a random subset of the 3 million users. They're not. The 3 million users are much like the rest of society. The 300,000 addicts are overwhelmingly male, working class, poor, they've been fell by the education system, they come from the poorest homes in our poorest communities, they've been, they, 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 they've been, they've been in the care of local authorities, they've been in and out of prison, they've got mental health problems. Heroin, crack cocaine are not equal opportunity employers. The chances of people who've had the sort of privileged lives that most, not all, but most of you have had, yeah, the chances you've had are not available to those people. That is where our drug misuse problem is concentrated. 95% of drug harm is concentrated among that population, not amongst you. So why, I was asked, why am I speaking on this side of the debate? I'm speaking on this side of the debate because the debate is this house would say no to drugs. Well, actually, the risk level for you lot isn't great. Yeah? The, 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 uh, it, Professor David Nutt, who was once the government's chief advisor on this, chair of the Advisory Council on Misuse of Drugs, got sacked by Home Secretary Jackie Smith for saying the risk of drugs is analogous to the risk of horse riding. Now, he's a professor at King's, his maths isn't wrong. Yeah, he was sacked because it was a stupid thing for someone in his role to say. Uh, but, for all of you lot, it's true, it's risky, some of you will wind up in a mess because of it, but not many of you. Just as some of you will wind up in a mess because of your alcohol use. Rather more of you than, than from your drug use, probably, because it will continue for longer in your lives, but not enough to justify making alcohol illegal. But my concern, and you know, despite what was said about the Home Secretary and idiocy, I spent 20, 15 years of my life advising Home Secretaries to be idiots, and I tend to agree with them, so I'm, I'm one of the guilty men. Why am I one of the guilty men? Because I'm not that interested in you lot. You can look after yourselves. I'm interested in the people who grow up in poverty in Burnley and Middlesbrough and the East Coast towns, all the places that voted for Brexit, the places that, that, that very few people in Oxford will ever go to, the places that the establishment could ignore for many years. They're the people I'm interested in, and for them, Drugs is a real problem, and it exacerbates problems they've already got. They will often have mental health problems, as I've talked about, they'll be offenders, but what tends to happen, and we heard this in the opening speak for the proposition, 
It's assumed that their drug use causes all of that. It doesn't. Overwhelmingly, those problems preceded their drug use. Their drug use and their drug addiction then entrenches those problems, makes it extremely unlikely that they'll actually be able to get on top of them. Uh, that's why, from my point of view, it's actually right for us to keep drugs illegal. Yeah? Drugs don't do as much harm as they're made out to do for most people, but they do enough harm for the vulnerable for it to be, in my view, sensible for society to prohibit drug use. And that doesn't mean that we should be locking people up for possession. Doesn't mean that we need exactly the suite of laws that we have at the moment. But we heard earlier about the strength of the alcohol lobby. My concern is if we legalise, we add to the alcohol lobby and the tobacco lobby a cannabis industry lobby that will be as determined to make profits for his, its business as Diageo and Philip Morris are currently for theirs. How does the alcohol and tobacco industry maximise profit? Not by selling to you lot. They make much more money by selling to people who are alcohol dependent and, and poor people who, in, 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 within which populations smoking is now concentrated. If there was a cannabis industry, that cannabis industry, like alcohol, like tobacco, would target the most vulnerable. And the most worrying statistics coming out of Colorado aren't the ones that show increased cannabis use amongst the young. It's not surprising there hasn't been a huge growth in Colorado in cannabis use amongst the young, because the, the legalisation of medical cannabis in Colorado meant it was already at levels twice twice as high as it is here. So there wasn't an awful lot of scope for it to go up any further. The concern is increasing consumption by the most vulnerable. Already in this country, 75% of the cannabis tonnage is consumed by 9% of cannabis users. The vast majority of cannabis users use about 10% of the product. The vast majority of the product is used by daily users. Those who use daily are three times more likely to develop dependency than those who use weekly or monthly. Legalisation means capitalism will target the most vulnerable, exploit their weakness to make profit. We don't need to keep the drug laws exactly as they are, but remember your experience with cannabis and with much of the rest of your life isn't life as it's led by those who are on the sharp end of it and experience most vulnerability. Don't indulge yourself by making Saturday night easier for you and make, uh, 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 and make 365 days a year hell for the poor people. Thank you.